Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 22nd of November, 2016. The big story is Tropical Storm Otto, tucked away down here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. Pretty rare to have this happen, and even rarer still is the chance that this might make landfall in Costa Rica. That has never happened before with a hurricane, as far as I can tell from the records, if we click on it, and look at the actual track map. The official forecast now from the National Hurricane Center indicating that this comes across and makes landfall in Costa Rica. That has never happened before, so this would be unprecedented. And folks down there, obviously not used to hurricanes, they've never had one. You know, you think about how far back the reliable records go, 100, 150, 165 years or so. You know, maybe something happened somewhere in that time period. But as far as the satellite era and certainly the age of modern ships and communication, the radio age, etc., where information can be relayed reliably, uh, this hasn't happened. So uh, it's a big deal, and um, it's going to have some significant impacts, unfortunately. And so the history, interesting side of it, uh, the historical perspective side, I think will be overshadowed by what's going to happen uh, potentially with the damage from this, especially from rainfall. Um, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. So to show you kind of how unusual this setup is, all of this color in here is dry air. And it is not favorable, and cool air for the most part. Very, very unfavorable. This, this is hurricane-killing air all through here. And look where Otto is, literally tucked in to the smallest spot almost possible down here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. There's dry air in the Pacific here. The water is cooling with that La Nina not far away. I mean, this is really remarkable from a meteorological perspective. Uh, upper level winds, a little bit of shear over the top of it. You know, the outflow certainly is there, but you can see that the clouds are getting pulled off to the northeast. So it's not under ideal conditions, which is good. That means it won't strengthen too rapidly, but the small size of auto is problematic because if it does find even a window of 6 to 12 hours where the upper level winds do become much more favorable as it is on its way west eventually towards Costa Rica and the border area here of Nicaragua, it can intensify quickly. But that being said, the possibility of hurricane force winds will only extend out a few dozen miles at the most. And so we're not talking about something like Matthew or a Katrina or a Mitch. Mitch was 1998, where you have a huge area of damaging winds. This is going to be much more of a rain issue. And we've already seen a lot of rain down here in Panama. I have seen comments on our YouTube channel from folks that are there uh, discussing that and mentioning it. And this is a problem because this is still a couple of days away from making landfall. So a couple of positives, like I mentioned, because of the small size, the wind field and the actual wind impacts will be fairly low and confined to a fairly small area. So if it were to make landfall right here, just south of the border, that's pretty much the only area that's going to have hurricane force winds, really, and maybe a little bit to the north. Uh, because we don't have a large circulation with this system. Instead, these rain bands that will be rotating in are what I am much more concerned about, because all of this deep moisture down here will get wrung out as this thing makes its way west towards land, and that is going to be a big problem. Mentioning the upper-level winds once again, uh, favorable but not ideal. You do have that anticyclonic flow, but they're not perfect, and this is not perfectly aligned with the anticyclone in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and as I mentioned, that is helping to at least keep this from rapidly intensifying. I mean, come on, it's the end of November, we are eight days away from the official end of the hurricane season. I think this system, again, from a meteorological perspective, is doing rather well considering the time of year that it is in. The wind shear analysis, these tools, by the way, coming from the University of Wisconsin, way up in the northern part of the United States on the Canadian border up there. Uh, why do they have interest in hurricanes? Well, the universities, each one of them, 
has specialties, and you have some like Colorado State and their tropical meteorology program, and University of Wisconsin as an example with their Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. Uh, hey, every every little bit helps, and this is a great tool. It shows us green, yellow, and red. Green is favorable, yellow is neutral, red, of course, unfavorable. And look, as a highlight in yellow here, the red areas. Isn't that kind of weird? But yeah, you get the idea. Look at all this that's unfavorable. And again, this is outlining the idea that I was talking about, that look, right here, this green area, one small little bastion of solitude, if you will, for this system auto to take advantage of where wind speeds in the atmosphere are not changing too much with height to rip the system apart. We call that wind shear, and it's got that little area of green down there to take advantage of. So you folks in Costa Rica, Panama, and southern to southeastern Nicaragua need to be ready for this, and more so from the rainfall perspective. And I want to talk about that here, a very important part of the National Hurricane Center Public Advisory is this area right here, the hazards affecting land and the rainfall here, three to six inches over parts of um, where this system is located north of the Isthmus of Panama, for example. So we're talking about the islands in that area because it's still moving so slowly. But as it moves closer, it'll get away from these islands, all right? And then it'll be closer to the mainland of Panama and southern Costa Rica through tomorrow. And then that's when the rainfall will really start to accumulate anywhere from 6 to 12 inches uh, and then isolated amounts of 15 to 20. And that is not good because you do have some uh, elevation down there. And so the possibility of raging rivers that are not used to seeing this kind of heavy rain and mudslides uh, just it's, this is dangerous there's no other way to describe it and there's so much emphasis placed on category and wind speed and pressure for example the pressure is down to 986 and as of the time I'm recording this video the winds are 70 miles per hour but boy this effect right here this rainfall really really going to be bad and there's no way to determine ex exactly who will be impacted so you kinda have to get the word out to people who live along these gullies and areas where the water can converge and where these raging streams, which will be raging, uh, can do harm to people and property. So hopefully the word will get spread uh, efficiently and we won't have too much in the way of loss of life. But I am very worried about this because we've seen what happens uh, when this rainfall falls over these areas. Look at Mitch in 1998. That's a prime example. Next up, we have wind. And yes, there will be tropical storm winds and then eventually hurricane force winds. But as I talked about, uh, really this is a very small area that will be impacted, so I'm not too concerned. Now, along the coast, the surf, uh, the swells generated by this storm, will cause some pretty big waves down there. And these are some beautiful coastlines. Uh, and some of these areas have these coves and... Um, areas where the wave energy can focus and so you can get some rather large sort of surge uh, run-ups of these waves coming in what we call the wave run-up and they can be pretty big and sort of jam the water into these local coves uh, that are so picturesque normally well they could become very dangerous so people down there enjoying the beauty need to be mindful of this okay because that could be a problem too moving water those giant waves coming at you uh, that could be a big, serious problem. So just take heed. you got people down there, you know, that are vacationing down there for Thanksgiving or whatever. People get married down there. A lot of, you know, it's a big tourist spot. Ecotourism, et cetera. You know, please get the word out. This is nothing. People may look at it and go, oh, it's just a tropical storm. Uh, please, please, you would never say it's just a rattlesnake, right? Or it's just a cobra. It's just a little king cobra. It's just a little rattlesnake. It's still dangerous if it bites you, even if it's a little one. And this is a little tropical storm, small, but it's going to pack a big punch with that one major impact, and that is rainfall, and then the peripheral lesser impacts of the surf and the wind. Uh, and it'll be problematic. You'll see. Unfortunately, I'll be talking about uh, the effects of this 
and you'll see what happens. So, you know, we'll do what we can to get the word out, and hopefully folks down there are paying attention. All right, well, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe so you get updates in the future, not only for hurricane season, but off-season discussions, winter storms for the um, uh, mainly the east coast of the United States, but other big-ticket weather items as well. And then we're always looking ahead to the next hurricane season, even in the off months of December through May. So there's always lots of stuff to talk about, even in the off season. So if you feel so inclined, subscribe and be a part of it. All right. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.